Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where OP quits and then strips in front of his boss. Our next Reddit post is from Samanik. So back when I was a teenager around 14 years old, I worked for the shop down the road as their weekend baker, which was mainly just defrosting pre-cooked items or browning pre-cooked bread in the ovens. My boss's daughter also worked there as a checkout staff. However, she would just call in sick or hungover every weekend, so of course her dad would let her off the hook and make me cover her shift. So I would work from 5am to 7pm most weekends. After a couple of years, I decided I was quitting and gave them my two weeks notice. My boss asked me to stay an extra week to train the new weekend baker, which I agreed to. At the end of the third week, I went to my boss's office and did the usual, well, it's been great working with you, to which he replies, so, OP, the extra week you work to train the new baker means you've been here two years. Which means, according to policy, you need to work four weeks notice instead, so I'll see you next week. Also, you need to give us back your uniform on your last shift, and it needs to be freshly cleaned. Being a petulant teenager who was tired of waking up at 4am, I stared at him in disbelief for a couple of seconds, waiting for him to grin and say, just kidding. That moment didn't come. So, I walked out of his office, stripped down to my boxers, folded up my baker's whites, my trousers, and even the little mesh fedora on top, walked into his office again, and dropped the uniform on his desk, and walked home. He followed me downstairs and through the shop, shouting about how I'd never work anywhere again. Thinking back, that must have been a strange thing for customers to see. Apparently, according to his daughter, who got back in touch with me a couple of years later, I'm now one of the stories that my old boss tells people after he's had a few drinks. Oh man, I love the threat that you'll never work anywhere again. Like, what's he gonna do? Put you on some baker blacklist? Oh, I'm sorry sir, but we have to reject your application to work at this bank because, you see, you're on the baker blacklist, which means, quite frankly, you're unhireable. Our next Reddit post is from Dutch Not Sleeping. I used to work at a camp as a children's entertainer. One day, we had this girl come join us for archery. You had to pay 10 euros to join the archery activity. We had one dude come over to teach it, and my job was to basically babysit the kids, which is like 90% of the job anyway, so it was fine. Now, this girl wouldn't listen to me or the archery dude. We told the kids, wait until everyone has shot their arrows, then go pick up your arrows. But she would just shoot her arrows and then immediately go get them while the other kids were still shooting. This is obviously very dangerous. After warning her multiple times, I decided that enough was enough and I told her to leave the activity. Fast forward a couple of hours. I just finished another activity and I see the girl and her mother coming towards me. Now, I've seen this before, and generally I get the, Now, what do you say? Sorry. What? I can't hear you. Ugh, I'm sorry. Unfortunately, this wasn't the case here. It was the opposite. The mom wanted me to apologize to her daughter and then also give her her money back. Neither of which was going to happen, obviously, but it gets worse. Apparently, this girl stole 50 euros from her mom's purse. Then, she decided to pay for her archery thing at the service desk, and with the leftover 40 euros, she went to the shop and bought 40 euros worth of candy. But the mom wasn't mad at her, she was mad at us for allowing her to buy that much candy and buy a ticket to the archery thing without her permission. Apparently, it was all our fault. So, all the camp staff came together and decided this girl wouldn't be allowed to do anything without her mom's permission. Wanna buy some bread at our little shop in the morning? Better go get your mom. Wanna join the arts and crafts hour? Not without your mom's permission. Wanna pay a 1 euro deposit on a locker for a swimming pool? Nope. They quickly tried to backtrack, but we didn't. The mom had to constantly supervise her daughter, which means that she was also witnessing all of her bad behavior. Somehow, all of this was still our fault though. Our next Reddit post is from YO Peeps. Years ago, I worked in the energy industry. My location was manned by a single person, working 10-hour days with 8 days on and 6 days off. In the off hours, automation kept things running. During those 8 days, I was on call, so if there was a problem at the location, I was required to drop what I was doing and either log in to fix some issue or drive 50 miles out to the facility to fix the problem. Company policy stated that if there was ever a call, we got paid for a minimum of 2 hours at time and a half payment. 
After a particularly rough shift, with me having to spend lots of nights on location, I went on a much needed set of 6 days off. On my first day off, my counterpart on the other shift called with questions about the problems that I'd had. I answered and then I went back to resting. The next day, I decided to take a break and go off grid for the day. When I returned, I had a number of calls from my boss. When I called him back, he reprimanded me and told me that I was an on-call employee so I need to answer when called. Annoyed, I just said okay, but I asked him to follow that up in an email, which he did. We talked more about the problems for about 10 minutes and hung up. That evening, my counterpart called three more times and we talked through some ideas for fixing it. Over the next four days I had off, he, my boss, and others working on the issue called me many times. Now, remember when my boss said that I was an on-call employee and I was required to answer? I added each call to my spreadsheet. At the end of my six days off, I had logged just as many hours as I would have during my normal eight-day shift. At the end of the pay period, I was called into the office where my boss and the district manager demanded that I explain the excessive callouts. I provided the email sent to me by my boss as well as the company policy for calls. They said that was a pretty wide interpretation of both things. I countered and said that I'd been called and I answered as required by my boss's email, so per policy, I was entitled to call out pay. They disagreed and called in the vice president and HR, who surprisingly agreed with me. I was paid out for my time, and the new rule became that you were only to call off-duty employees in dire emergencies. I was never called on my days off again. I've said this a few times on my channel, I'm gonna say it again because people don't seem to like get the message, alright? When you tell someone to do something and they say, sure, can you send that to me in email form? That should be a warning sign, alright? That should send off alarm bells in your brain, like wait, hold on, do I really want to ask this person to do this? Is it wise of me to send this to them in email form and forever immortalize what I'm asking them to do? Because, <laughs> because based on r slash malicious compliance, it's almost always a bad idea for you. Sure, just send that to me in writing is code for I'm about to massively screw you over. Our next Reddit post is from Tired Butt. I'm an audio engineer for one of the military bands in the US. Even though I've been working professionally in the music industry for many years prior to entering the military, my lower rank, E4 for those who care, is often a barrier with communicating with higher ups. Some superiors see the value in my experience and advice, but many others see the rank and disregard my opinions. It's not uncommon for me to be loaned out to non-band events to provide guidance. Also, this story takes place during 2020 when the military was under work from home orders. I was in my barracks room, mixing some tunes on an average weekday when I get a call from my first sergeant. He's essentially the head honcho in my unit, just under the commander. Hey OP, this other unit is having a battalion level change of command ceremony today. They've had issues with their PA system in the past. Can you go help out and make things go smoothly? Totally! This was a fairly high level change of command ceremony at the lieutenant colonel level and the past few ceremonies had gone poorly due to technical problems. I was happy to help. I get prepped and make my way over to the location to start poking around the system. The gear they were using was pretty beat up and it looked like they pulled it out of a dirty closet. Whatever, it still turns on for now. I noticed some people setting up the speakers behind the lectern in such a way that it would cause feedback as soon as the mic was unmuted. Also, the cable runs were tripping hazards with no cable ramps or gaffer tape to hold them down. This isn't just a safety risk, it's also a good way to rip out all the connections from the gear. There were a few other minor issues that needed fixing, but those were the most mission critical problems. I go to find the person in charge and I spot a sergeant major overseeing everything. I make my way over to him and I introduce myself as a sound technician for the band who's here to help and advise with sound stuff. Right off the bat, he's a little short with me. What can I do for you, OP? We're a bit busy here. I reiterate that I'm here to help with the PA, and I condense my observations into words. I am partway into explaining the dangers of his speaker placement when he cuts me off. This isn't our first rodeo, so we know what we're doing. At this point, I'm still going to give it my best shot before the event train wrecks. I make my way over to the staff sergeant who's plugging in speakers and we start to talk about speaker placement and feedback. A minute or two later, the sergeant major comes over and interrupts us. Hey, didn't you hear me earlier? We don't need you here. You can F off. Roger that, sergeant major. So I went home and reported up why I wasn't able to help. 
The next day, my first sergeant tells me how horribly their system was feeding back, along with crackles and pops. It totally derailed the vibe, to the point where the new lieutenant colonel chose to leave the lectern and just talk loudly instead of using the mic. Moreover, the commanding general of the base, a three-star general, had attended and was apparently very unhappy with the whole thing. And, lo and behold, the next week, a memo comes down to me from the office of the commanding general to upgrade the sound system and put together a training on how to run it. It still makes me laugh thinking what the sergeant major's face must have looked like when they realized that the only person qualified enough to advise them was the one he had told to F off. Our next Reddit post is from Tio Baldicia. I sell baked goods to a local coffee shop. I've been doing it for over a year. They recently got a new owner and they were trying to make some changes. The new owner has made some questionable choices already, but really, it's none of my business. I just show up a few times a week and drop off various items for them to sell. At the end of the week, I drop off an invoice and they pay me. All is well. For a while, I was bringing one cake each week. Each cake was pre-sliced, so the staff had no extra work to do. A couple relevant details here. 1. These cakes that I sell her always sell out. 2. These cakes are one of her most profitable items. I sell her a cake that's 12 servings for 40 bucks, and she sells it for $5.25 a slice. So, with each slice, she makes about a buck ninety per serving, and on most of her other items, she only makes like 85 cents to a dollar per serving. Recently, the new owner told me to stop bringing cakes, saying that they were too expensive. So, instead, I've been bringing cupcakes. She sells them for four bucks a piece, and I charge her three dollars and fifteen cents each. But now, she only makes 85 cents per serving. No cakes though, so she's happy. Hmm, OP, I have a sneaking suspicion that this bakery is about to be taken over by a new owner. How could someone with such terrible math skills possibly succeed at a business? Our next Reddit post is from Cyfielder. Many years ago, I worked for a cafeteria slash catering company. The catering business was the much more lucrative of the two. Between mealtimes, we would work on catering projects. This would often run us past the end of our shift, resulting in overtime. One member of the management team, recently promoted, decided that his thing was going to be eliminating overtime. He held a meeting and announced to staff that there would be no more overtime. Clock out at shift's end, no exceptions. Afterwards, he took me aside and told me that, as a supervisor, I was expected to set an example. Okay, sure. A couple of days later, I was working on a cheese display. When my shift's end came around, I put everything down, walked to the clock, and swiped my card. I hear, Hey, where are you going? That's not finished! I said, No, but my shift is. I'm setting an example. Well, go finish it! I can't. I'm off work now. And I left. The next day, it was announced that all projects underway at the end of shift would be allowed to be finished regardless of time, as long as it wasn't abused. In other words, no foot dragging. It turns out, all the other hourly employees also left, and the manager had to finish several projects by himself. Since he was on salary pay, there was no overtime for him. I understand that he stayed quite late. Our next Reddit post is from Older But Not Wiser. Okay, so this happened when I was like 13. I was visiting my sister and my brother-in-law. My brother-in-law's grandmother and her grandkids were also visiting, so they're my nieces and nephews. My niece and nephews and their grandma were visiting at my sister's place while I was there as well. I had been staying there for about a week. Their grandma was a sweet woman, but she was very particular about only gifting things to her grandkids. But also, she expected everyone to do anything that she asked. I was raised to respect my elders and be helpful, so I bit my tongue when she took her kids for ice cream but left me out. I was helpful and put away her dishes from lunch even when she came back with toys for her kids and nothing for me. I kept telling myself not to expect anything from anyone because I'm not entitled to anything. I played with my niece and nephew for hours with their new toys and was so excited for them. I was glad that they got spoiled for the day. When she started asking me if I liked parks and swings, I got hopeful. They talked with my sister and brother-in-law about taking the kids to the park the next day. My sister asked the grandma if she was going to take me along too, since I said that I liked the park. She said, oh, of course not. She's not my family. That hurt. I knew it was true, but it still hurt. And it made me mad. So the next morning when she came for the kids and I was making my brother-in-law coffee, she asked me to put two sugars in her coffee. 
She never asked me to make her a cup, so I just ignored her and brought my brother-in-law his coffee and sat down. She asked where her coffee was, and I just told her, Oh, I only make coffee for family. She knew what I meant and tried to backtrack and say, But we are family, and I didn't mean what I said the night before. I just replied, Sorry, but I don't talk to strangers. Then I walked out of the room. My brother-in-law laughed so hard and told his mom, Well, what do you think she's going to say when you go around saying that she's not your family? For the whole three days that she visited, that's all that I would say or respond with her until my sister finally told me to knock it off. OP, that grandma sounds super toxic. She was holding that over the head of a 13-year-old? Come on, lady, just buy the kid ice cream. That was our slash malicious compliance. And if you like this content, check out my podcast where I publish the exact same episodes. Also, hit that subscribe button because I put out new Reddit videos every single day.